Hello. I do believe I'm live. Can you hear me? Thumbs up if anyone can hear me. I don't see anyone joining yet, so I'll wait till I know if y'all can hear me. That's my husband's magic arm there in the back. Joe, you can't tell anything yet because I only have the front camera. So don't move that guy yet. Today, we're going to be channeling our inner Lexi Grenzer, as I said in my little promo description. I'm going to turn off this. I'm going to turn off the banner because the live video has started. And we're going to do something like this um, using Iron Orchid Designs floral stamps. Lexi Grenzer, who I'm sure many of you have heard of, and I hope follow on the IOD page and on her own. Um, I watched some Lexi Grenzer videos to try and just learn ways to. Here's one that I created a bit ago, or actually this morning. This is on mixed media paper. I like watercolor paper better, but this is good too. This is like a hot press smooth watercolor paper made for lots of di different media. So it holds up well to water and other stuff. So we are gonna get started on a version of this because we've, we, We've seen Lexi do it. Lexi's a professional watercolor artist and her work is magnificent, but I know it's like, well, Lexi can do it, but can I do it? Can my customers do it? Let's uh, see if us mere mortals who are not yet at um, professional watercolorist level can make a beautiful wreath without you know, too much hassle and too much frustration. I think this looks pretty nice, pretty good from a first try. We're going to try attempt number two here. My name is Liz. I am the owner of Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. If you happen to be in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota or the St. Croix River Valley, Maybe I'm your IOD stockist and I hope you'll come see me. But if I'm not your stockist, you can find her or him on the Iron Orchid Designs webpage, ironorchiddesigns.com and search by location and find a retailer close to you. So I'm gonna make my face except I, I can't do that or I lose my microphone. I wonder how I make myself smaller. Let's see if I can do that. You guys, I'm still trying to figure out all this technology. I love when you can see my hands when I work and I want you to know who you're talking to. So let's see how that goes. I think you can still hear me my face picture is just a little bit in the background. So here's the one I worked on this morning. I am going to set that aside and get us started on this next. I did not bring my big plate, which would have been helpful because a, a good first step in doing this is to do a pencil mark of a circle so that we keep our wreath more or less a nice round shape. We get any feedback from my phone or anything, or is it sounding good? If it's sounding good, give me a thumbs up or something like that. Um, 
I am using these little things of archival ink today instead of the decor ink, just because I left my decor ink somewhere different. So I'm using a brown color, like Lexi um, kind of suggested. And we're just going to use, this is part of the peony stamp. And I'm going to start around. My color here is ground espresso. So it's a little bit darker brown. And I am going to begin using these stamps. Even though I don't have a round circle, I'm going to try to keep a nice round shape to this by eye. So I'm stamping this onto as you would with IOD ink. This is an archival ink that once it's dry, won't run with the watercolor. And I'm just placing those around to make that wreath shape. Any of you guys seen Lexi's um, video doing a wreath? Her watercolor work is so beautiful and inspired that it makes me want to be like Lexi when I grow up. Now Lexi's significantly younger than me, so that might require a time machine but I'm willing, if I can find the time machine, to go back and become a fabulous watercolor artist like Lexi when I grow up. I'm looking around for the right sizes of stamps. Uh, you guys know that I'm using chrysanthemums and peonies stamps today. And some of the stamps in that stamp set are giant, like this one too big for this purpose. So I'm kind of looking for the medium sized stamps out of those two stamp sets. I also have uh, twigs and branches and sprigs here at hand. I've got leaves from other, I'm gonna come down here. And this is, this is a practice piece. I am going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy the process and maybe I'll end up with a product and a wreath that I love. But if not, I'm, just, I'm learning. I'm learning as I go. And that is like the absolute best way to get comfortable with products and techniques is to just let it go and have some fun, learn what colors do together. I've got to bring that back in a circle and probably start bringing off some leaves and such so that where I've lost some roundness, let me see, is that this one? This is a smaller one. I'm gonna put this smaller one in here for a little bit of variety. I have masks handy so that we can mask over some areas and start mixing in and put that guy there. I don't know, might be too much, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So happy Wednesday, everyone. My, uh, my week's been kind of crazy. So I am happy to have the chance to focus on doing a, a live video this morning and having fun creating something and not feel like I should be doing something else because this is my job this morning. I've got some leaves. Can you see that one? I'm going to start just working in leaves to fill out this wreath. I find working with the IOD floral stamps is reminiscent of arranging flowers in a, in a vase. I can fill, I'm gonna look for the mask for that one. These masks are tricky to find sometimes, aren't they? Because they're 
transparent. Sometimes I make paper ones, like the old fashioned way. I make the paper and cover them over. I'm trying to find the one to fit on that tulip. I had pulled them all out earlier, but I don't see them now. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use some of my paper one and try to cover up the parts. There, yeah, let's see how that goes so I don't get leaf on there. Let that come out over this way. Pick that up. Ah, gonna have to come back and it's all about ad-libbing for me sometimes. So there's a leaf. When I start applying the color, that'll be better. Let's come back out again with one more of these over here. I just won't touch that. And there we go. Different leaf form, this big, longer leaf. I'm going to stamp up with the espresso. Um, I learned this specifically from Lexi that using the brown ink just looks better for a floral thing than black. I mean, it's a matter of personal taste. If you use black, it might appear more of a, a drawn graphic thing. I like to think the brown ink Is reminiscent of, of the twigs and the sticks and so on. So we have a decent base. It'll start to take shape and color and form when we start using the watercolor paints. I have a little palette that I set up earlier today, just some pinks and greens and yellows. And I've got a whole bunch of other stuff set aside too that I can reach into. I'm gonna start on this flower first. And I just have some clean water here. And I'm gonna lay water on and try to get my paint to activate here. This one's pretty soft. Let's see if I can get some more out of this guy. Yep, that's better. And just lay it. I learned from watching Lexi and other watercolor artists to put the paint down and leave it. Don't overwork it. Kind of go to other areas that are not touching water. I can drop in other red a little bit. I can do that now. I can do that later. That's quite a contrast, but I'm okay with that. Going to come here and not let them touch where I don't want them to because they would all run together. But just put some of these colors and let them go where they want to go. Watercolor for me is super fun because it makes me let go of control. And I just love to watch the colors blend together. So I'm using water. I am finding different reds and pinks and I'm laying them on. This is layer number one. After it dries, we'll come back and lay in other colors. And the IOD stamps just make such a beautiful base. So there we go. I'm almost done on this one with the first layer. I am going to, you know, try some other colors because to my eye, peonies and chrysanthemums, there's just a variety of tones and colors in them. So that one is good. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so I don't bump it while I work on a flower over here, there's still a little bit of pinkness in my brush. And I'm gonna go really quickly today, one, because that helps me not overwork things, and two, because we have limited time, don't we? So I'm coming in with a 
a yellow ochre color because I find when I mix in these more neutral tones, it makes the bright colors pop more. I'm gonna lay some pink back in here and just come around having fun like a, like a coloring book and fill in the lines here. If I go out of the lines a little bit, that's all right too. Just using different pinks and reds with the yellow. And remembering it's a first layer and I can come in and intensify color later. With watercolor, I am learning. You start light and add more to get to darker. I'm not a pro like Lexi and I'm, and I'm rarely a purist when it comes to working with different media. I, I mix my media a lot. Uh, so when this, before it gets to its end, I'll probably be adding a little bit of white acrylic paint back in for some details. And, I, and I've seen professional artists do that too. See how that runs in there? And I like how it takes on a life of its own. I'm gonna get out a, some other paints here. This one is, let's do this one. It's a, hmm, I don't even know how to pronounce the name. It's got a fancy name and it's in a tube here still. So I'm gonna just squirt a little onto my palette and pick that up. Ooh, that's a pretty color. And just lay it in there with that brown. Bring it from the ends. A trick I learned from other watercolor artists, not Lexi, but some others to give some interest in, whoops, is to kind of sprinkle salt and you get, you have to let that thoroughly dry, but putting a little salt on there will create some patterning in the paint as it dries. And while I'm just gonna drop in a little more of this really pretty rose color. Okay. Going around, dropping in color. Some more of this one. Whoops, right off the tube, that's okay. And you kind of see where we're going with this, right? We start with the, the light, the ones that come across that I maybe want to do different colors. Um, I don't let the water hit yet. And we're just going to keep on going here. What else I see with flowers a lot is um, you get like the pinks and the yellows, but you often also get some green mixed with that. So I have a little bit of green here. I'm gonna add in and let those mix. And these stamps are just so gorgeous that I feel like I'm a professional watercolor artist sometimes when I get to use them. Let's see what else I have here. Cadmium red, we'll try a little cadmium red. See how bright that gets to be. That's a very warm kind of a red color. So I'm gonna come on a different flower over here and lay some of that in with water. Now I haven't been working on this all that long and I think it's already starting to take shape because of the foundation we got from the peony and chrysanthemum shapes. And we're going to just kind of keep laying on paint and laying on water, letting them mix together. And remembering this is layer one. 
We're not going to have the complexity of color that we'll get by the end right away. We've got to work up to that. I'm going to start putting in some green and notice that when I let the green and the red mix together, it kind of mutes it out and becomes a, more of a neutral green or brown. Just allow yourself to play and see what the different paints do, how they mix together. Sometimes when you follow the rules, you get an okay result, but when you break the rules, you're astonished. I think that's good for a first layer. I hope you can see this well enough. I'm gonna start coming in over here, but not touching the red yet, but laying in green for this, staying away from that wet pink and red paint, laying in a few shades of green because uh, that's how leaves look to me. They're variegated and the same leaf will look different whether it's inherently different or it's just looking different in the sunshine. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on this leaf. This is a nice big leaf, a little bit of brown here and then drop some green back in. I'm liking this olive sort of green. And just laying that into this leaf stamp. And we're going around and around and getting that done. Um, because we have just a limited time, I'm going to set this one aside and let it start to dry. Maybe we'll come back to that before the session is over here, but I wanna demo some other things here where this has had a layer or two of paint. Um, here, you can see where I laid some salt. I'm gonna scratch that off. And I don't know, can you see the effect that you get from that. So again, just interesting, more interesting effects of paint. It, um, here we go. It just sort of model, this is, this is what it does. It models up and blends together beautifully. And once we have layer one dry, I'm gonna wipe off that salt now that it's good and dry. You don't wanna do that when your salt is wet or it'll smear all over the place. But if we take our paintbrush now and start laying back, look at how that intensifies the color here. So watercolor doesn't have to be pastel and pretty. It can be bold and beautiful. Um, we can add more water and let it move around. We get that variation and that interest here, leaving some of the former layer, right? Can you see that? I am letting what's underneath stay, so that'll be more pale and I'm just darkening up some parts of it. And I'm using the lines from the stamp to help me know where to lay those colors down. I want a more pinky kind of a color here. So I'm just kind of looking at what I have in my box. But I'm liking this one. This one looks nice. So this guy is Opera Pink. It's it's a nice um, magenta esque, at least to me. I'm going to come and lay that in here at the edges and on the ends. 
And, you know, a, a true professional watercolor artist might come along and say, Liz, you're messing that up. That is not how we do it. And I will say, oh, that's good to know. But, you know, I'm having fun and I like it. So I'm going to keep doing it anyway, even if it's not the way. If I like my result, and I am here right now, I'm liking what I'm getting as a result, I'm gonna stay with that. And I'm just darkening some areas, not all of them. I'm laying this opera pink down in a few spots because I allowed this to dry. It's gonna give that nice variation in in tone again so it doesn't read as a flat coloring book it starts to read more as an actual you know painting three-dimensional painting of complex flower shapes and these colors are just to die for the shapes of the leaves and the Petals are so delicate, but I can get in here and get a lovely result just laying in that next layer of color. I used some purple in the first layer. I'm gonna get a little bit of that out too, some violet to darken up these violet areas. So I'm just touching it to there and I'm putting it on my little cake pan palette here because you only need a dip, just a little tiny drop goes such a long way. I'm laying in some purple where I had lighter purple. I'm going to leave it pretty intense coming along these edges and in here and just putting it down so it's in control more than I am. I love watercolor paint because it has a mind of its own. I love all the paints. I love watercolor paints for what they do. And I love acrylic paints for what they do. And chalk paints, you can water chalk paints down. The, um, the thing with watercolor paint, when you have it nice and watery like this, as it dries, it, it should stay transparent and let your lower layers and the white of the paper kind of come through and, and shine and just be bright and beautiful. So just kind of dip, dip, dipping some things in here and not getting too specific. Let that dry, come over here. One of the funnest things, and I used to think it was just for fun, but now I know a little bit more. It is for fun, but it's also to unify your picture you take the colors that you're using and you spatter them some. You get a fun result and you bring that color in, into all areas. So when someone's looking at your painting, their eye is moving all around and not just stuck on one place. So this is what we've got going on today. Um, anybody have any questions? I'm using StreamYard again, which lets me do, you know, two cameras so I can talk to you and show you. I'm, I'm trying to get better at showing close-ups and so on. So hang in there with me. I'm gonna stay with it until I know more about it. But this is what we have right now. Um, I'm not sure where to go from here with this purple. I'm gonna lay a little bit more in on the edges and in here. I'm liking it. 
I'm liking it quite a bit. What does it need now, you guys? I think I might want to intensify some of these gold and orange areas. So let's try that. This paint tube doesn't want to open, so it says, nope, shouldn't be using that one right now. So let's try this one. And I could mix some of this with some of the other colors on the palette, or I can just mix it on the... There we go. Not too overworked, just laying some of that in, not letting it touch well, maybe I will let it touch and see. Oh, yes, I like what that did. Can you see what that did? The purple ran into the yellow and it just created a nice blossom. I'm calling it a blossom. Laying those in different places. So when this dries, there'll be different levels of dark and light. I will come back in with some white later on. Le Lexi demoed that in her floral wreath painting to come in and do, and do dits and dots and blend everything out that way. So I have one more tiny one that I worked on earliest today. So I'm going to set this one that we just intensified down. Um, this was my very first practice from this morning. You see, it's not terribly round. It is, it's okay. But what I want to do here is start putting a little bit of detail in right now with paint. So I'm going to do dots and let them dry that way. I'm gonna put in some just different kinds of marks. Not going back over everything again, but just laying that in again, intensifying, but making little marks with different ways that I'm leaving my brush. So I think I would like to hear if someone watching or is, I, I think I would like to hear if this is like an acceptable way to do watercolor. Um, I like to think as creatives, we make our own paths and our own rules. And sometimes it works and sometimes we learn. Sometimes it works and we learn and sometimes we just learn. <laughs> and uh, the end result we're maybe not happy with but we move on with better knowledge the next time. Let's do a nice uh, spritz of some red in, on here. I will probably come out with some random-ish marks using the stamps just as a starting off point. And this is what I have for you guys today. I'm not seeing any comments and I'm not sure if that's because I don't know how to read them here on StreamYard or, or what. So I'm gonna bring my... Here's me, there's the back of my head. Here's our pictures we've been working on in various stages of completion. Um, I hope if nothing else, you see what a beautiful result you can get here just using those stamps in a variety of colors. Now today I'm using watercolor. You could use markers or watered down chalk paints and just get all sorts of other effects from using all these. 
So I'm gonna get ready and sign off for today. I want you to know that here in Minnesota, even though the calendar says it's almost May, it's 37 degrees outside. We have not gotten a break from winter yet. So that is all the more reason I want to be painting these beautiful blooms using my IOD peonies and sprigs and twigs and chrysanthemum. It brings spring into my life when the weather won't cooperate. So play around with them. Um, you could probably create something at least as pretty as this without too much problem at all. Have fun. That is the basis. That's where you start out with uh, beautiful art, I think, is you, you put that joyful energy into your work and it will shine and get better and better. Try that little salt trick technique on the wet watercolor paper if you want to. Make sure you let it dry completely. Don't try to knock it off while it's still wet or you'll make a mess, but it soaks in the pigment from the watercolor and gives some nice texture, if you can see that there. There's lots of fun things to do with all of the different paint media we work with. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota, but please find your local stockist. We love to help our customers. We want to show you everything we know and we want to learn from you too, because that's, that's how we do best. We, uh, we learn from one another. It does take a village and all that. So thank you guys for joining me today. I love my followers and my customers and my IOD tribe. So I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Who knows what we'll have in store then, but get out there and make something beautiful. IOD makes it easy. Bye guys. Have a great day week.